Welcome to Wrong Time Watch. My name is Kevin, and today we're looking at the Van Banner Parking Master 2.0. This particular model has the green dial. They also offer a blue dial and a white dial. However, both of those are currently sold out. So if you would like to purchase this watch, uh, currently the only dial color you can get is this green dial. I would like either the green or the blue. The white's okay too. I guess if I had to pick, I would probably pick the blue dial, but I do like this green dial as well. And it has a gradient uh, green dial to it. It's just not the easiest thing to photograph or video due to this single dome sapphire crystal with AR coating on the underside. There's quite a bit of distortion from this crystal. It's got a lot of dome to it. Uh, there you can see it right there. Kind of like looking into a, a magic uh, crystal ball, I guess. It's cool though. It's a fun watch. Um, there's a lot of unique features to this watch, but before we continue with the watch, let's take a quick look at the packaging. It comes in this nice uh, cardboard box. There's a hinge mechanism in here, mechanism, and uh, it comes with this little Rolex style um, hang tag thing, kind of a neat touch. And uh, there's the instructions, please read before using the watch. I uh, haven't read them, but um, yeah, let's set this off to the side and get back into the watch. It's a cool and fun watch. Oh, uh, before I get any further, I always forget to mention this uh, when, they, when these are paid promotions. Uh, I'm not paid for the video, not being paid for the video, but I did receive the watch and I don't have to pay for the watch so I'll uh, keep that in mind as we go forward here it's a very unique case shape I'm not familiar with another watch with a shape like this it has this angular case but also the uh, center part of the case is this cylinder I kind of picture it as like a, a tank um, you know this is the, the turret up here and then this is the body of the tank or you can look at it as maybe like a cow catcher on the front of a train you know it's a neat watch also the case back is kind of subset down inside of the lugs or if you look at it another way the lugs sweep down below the bottom of the case but anyway it's a brush case uh, there's no polishing on this watch anywhere and uh, these lugs do kind of swoop down, like I mentioned, and they are drilled lugs. But also you have these quick release pins on the bracelet. And that is a display case back with printing on the display case back. Uh, it says a Van Banner watch, Miota 9039 Sapphire and 316L. So 316L stainless steel. Uh, Miota 9039 is... Similar, it's based off the 90S5 or 9015. It's a no date movement. I believe the 9039 is a little bit taller of a hand stack, or maybe it's the other way around. Uh, but, anyway, it's essentially the same movement. Ceramic bezel insert. Uh, it does have loom, BGW9 loom. And from what I read on the website, the orange and red is also loomed. So looking forward to checking that out towards the end of the video. You can see the crown is offset here. It's, it's not exactly 3 o'clock, not exactly 4 o'clock. I would call it a 3.30 crown. So that's unique as well. And then it's color filled, but also engraved uh, PM for a parking master. You can see the bracelet blossoms out. It's a 20 millimeter lug width, but then the bracelet here blossoms out to 24, and then that tapers back down to 18. So a lot of things going on with this watch. Uh, price for this is 388 Canadian dollars. The company is based in Canada. And today that works out to just below 307 US dollars. Uh, the price will vary every day with the market. Uh, that does include free shipping. 
200 meter water resistance, and this does have a countdown bezel. So if you're looking at a typical dive watch, such as my SKX009 here, you can see the numbers go from zero to 60 in a clockwise direction. And uh, this goes from zero to 60 in a counterclockwise direction. I actually prefer uh, countdown bezels for everyday practical use. It makes more sense to me. I really don't use um, a diving bezel really all that much. So the reason why this watch is called the Parking Master is if you were to park somewhere and have to put money in a parking meter for your parking spot, say it's, um, uh, let's say, let's do 40 minutes. Say you have a, a set for 40 minutes, then you would take the 40 and then move it to where your minute hand is currently at. And then as your day goes on, you're in the store buying groceries or whatever you're doing, the minute hand will, of course, advance around. And as you get closer to the indicator here on the bezel, you're approaching, you're losing time on your parking meter. So you'll have 30 minutes, you know, 20 minutes. Actually, I'll just move the handset around. So, okay, so... 10 minutes have gone by, you have 30 minutes left on your parking meter. Another 10 minutes go by, you have 20 minutes left. And finally, you're down to 10 minutes, and then you're approaching the orange zone, telling you have 5 to 10 minutes left. And then when you're in red, you have less than 5 minutes left to uh, either put more money in the parking meter or get in your car and uh, go to the next door or whatever you're going to do. So that's kind of uh, how that works there. Move the handset back to 1010, and then we'll fix this bezel. I have another watch with a countdown bezel. I have at least one more, and I'm pretty sure that's a bi-directional bezel, not a unidirectional. Also, the new uh, Tudor Pelagos FXD has a countdown bezel, and I believe that's bi-directional, so you can turn it in either direction. And that's supposed to be used with... Uh, with a compass, uh, so you would say, okay, we need to head in this direction for 10 minutes. So you just turn the watch to put the 10 minute indicator on the minute. And then once 10 minutes goes by, you would stop and then you go in your next heading. Uh, but anyway, that's enough of that. So let me know what you guys think of this dial or the, uh, or also the crystal or well, anything really comment uh, down below your thoughts on this watch. It doesn't look, the distortion does not look as bad on camera, but looking at it by eye, it, uh, it, these kind of heavily domed crystals kind of trip me up a little bit. Also, you can catch a lot of stuff in the background uh, with that distortion on the crystal there. Now you can see my face down there at the bottom or my head, whatever you want to say down there. Um, this bezel is very, super easy to use. Um, Nice knurling. Also, the bezel overhangs the case. And then down here, you have really no interference. You can get a nice solid grip on this bezel. Very nice and easy to use. So, I mentioned the angular case, bracelet, 330 crown, single dome with AR coating, display case back. It's 120 click, a bezel, as I mentioned, ceramic, unidirectional. A BGW9 loom on the bezel insert, and then the dial we have C3 and BGW9 loom on that gradient green dial. And those are applied indices. Hopefully you can see that there. The handset is fairly thick as well. You get a lot of light play on this. All right, so the bracelet, as I mentioned, these are quick release pins on here, 20 millimeter lug width, solid end links with those, again, quick release pins, uh, solid links. And this, you would typically call this a milled clasp. This is actually a stamped clasp. It's just thick metal, but 
uh, a portion of it is milled, so tomato, tomato, however you want to look at it. These portions here are stamped, and you get six micro adjusts. The links are small, they do articulate nicely. The clasp is a bit uh, big and, and long, but it still wears comfortably on wrist. Is signed as well, um, engraved there, machine engraved. Oh, one other thing to note with this watch is it was um, a little challenging to size the bracelet. It has these double headed screws, which is fine. You, you, you can manage. You just need two screwdrivers, obviously. And it takes a little bit of um, dexterity to be able to uh, size this bracelet. Uh, but I was able to get it done. It just takes a little bit of patience. Um, I was expecting to, you know, I see the screw heads, I'm like, oh, great, it'll take me, you know, a minute to size this bracelet. I'm turning the screw head, and it just keeps turning and turning, and uh, it took me a little bit too long to figure out. Uh, it wasn't exactly coming out like it was supposed to, so just keep that in mind when you purchase and size this watch. I think I already mentioned six micro adjusts. I sized it a little bit large just so I wouldn't have to worry about sizing the bracelet again. You have all these micro adjusts here, so you can uh, downsize it a lot easier than you can add another link back in. So dimensions, there's going to be a couple of caveats with the dimensions on this. Uh, lug to lug, I measured two different ways because it has this fixed male center link here. So from the tip to tip of this fixed male center link, I'm getting 52.8 millimeter. The case itself is actually fairly small, uh, lug to lug at 48. And then the case diameter, I had mentioned the bezel overhangs the case. So the case I'm getting 40 millimeter, and then the bezel I'm measuring at 41. The thickness on this, due to the very heavily domed crystal, I'm getting 14 millimeter thickness. Typically with the Miyota 9039 movement, it would be a thinner watch, but that dome adds, oh, I don't know, i say at least three millimeters. It is a two millimeter thick uh, crystal, but it's the dome goes beyond the thickness of the crystal. All right, so the lug width, as I mentioned, 20 millimeter lug width. Bracelet expands out to 24, and then it tapers back down to 18. So, nice bracelet. I've seen similar bracelets on quite a few other watches, and uh, these are always comfortable on wrist. They fold over real nice. Nice articulation. And lastly, a uh, 6.9 millimeter signed crown. Then that's back filled in with this red paint. Enamel, I'm not sure exactly what kind of paint that is or how they do that, but it looks neat. Kind of almost reminds me of a stop sign. This case is really neat too. I like how you you have this cylinder here, and then the lugs kind of just are machined, you know, into that. But then it just keeps going along here with that machining, and then you kind of get a sense of the lug here at the bottom, with the way that it's back cut into that case. So, very neat. Like I said, the bezel is just super easy to use. And it's, it's a fairly stiff bezel. I guess I am turning it with one finger right now. But I don't think you're going to knock it out of position uh, on accident. So let me get this on wrist and then we'll check out the loom. So here it is on my six and a half inch wrist with the 52 millimeter wristband. So technically the male end links here do overhang my wrist, but it it's sloped down right at the edge. So it's not really that big of a deal. I 
You have to let me know what you guys think of this watch on my wrist. It's a very neat looking watch. And there it is next to the SKX, so it is a little smaller than my SKX here. Actually, we'll leave this in the, the video and we'll check out the loom compared to the SKX. All right, I'll go ahead and pause the video and we can take a look at the loom. And there's that crystal distortion again. It's kind of neat. You get to a certain angle and all of a sudden it just, the distortion kind of just takes over. I should try this uh, in the pool. Uh, well, when it warms up, we'll be going out there for quite a few months. Well, there it is. The Van Banner Parking Master. A very impressive loom on this watch. Uh, the C3, I think, is the greenish loom. And the BGW9 would be the blue loom on the bezel. And the, the indices. But the 12 o'clock indice and then the hands... Uh, hour, minute, second hand are all C3 loom. Also, the crown on the Van Banner appears to be loomed as well. So, give it a few more seconds and then I'll hit it with EV light again and we can check out the crown. But yeah, it's a very cool and fun watch. The orange loom on the bezel it looks uh, really good actually. So the brightness of the loom, uh, the hands uh, definitely are a little bit brighter than the, the SKX. And then indices, maybe not quite as bright. But overall, uh, really impressed with the loom on that. Actually, I think the crown might still be lit up enough for us to see the loom. Maybe not. Maybe it's my imagination, but I was pretty sure it was loomed. Looks... Yeah, there we go. Pink or orange or something. I don't know. Very cool. This watch would be a good hit at the bar under some black lights. All right, that will conclude today's video. Uh, if you have not subscribed already, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button, notification bell, like button, and uh, leave a comment below. As always, thank you for taking the time. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.